Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I'm your host as always, Professor Prime. And today we're going to talk about math and the lie detector test, aka the polygraph. So, let's get into it. So, some of you all may be familiar with the lie detector test. Uh, we see it in media, and it gets very sensationalized. And here's the thing, though. It's used a disturbing amount in reality, and I'm going to talk to you about why that's a problem. And, of course, the math behind it. Like, um, so let's begin. With a polygraph, with a lie detector test, basically it's a device or procedure that measures the body and physiological responses. It's medical and it's recording and then the results are open to interpretation. The idea is that uh, it measures things like uh, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, um, and to avoid complications, sweatiness, there are other terms for it, but it is sweatiness. <laughs> um, the idea being that if you're measuring these things, right, um, and let's say people ask you a question, if you answer these questions and there are fluctuations in the rates that are measured, it could be indicative of a person lying. And all the things that I mentioned, right, there are numerical values to them and visual representations to them. Math is built into a polygraph, right? Like, um, and, you know, you may have seen that on TV or online, but the idea is you don't have a polygraph without math. But here's the thing about that. Just because math is involved doesn't mean it's actually valid, right? Context is key. Every time that we use math, context is key. And I'd argue, like, that's the case for well everything right so when it comes to a lie detector test it gives you data right but what can you say about that data right like let's say i'm an like i'm answering a series of questions right um and you know i uh, let's say uh, you know there are some fluctuations right that doesn't mean that i'm lying because say like i'm answering questions and maybe my blood pressure gets a little higher, maybe I'm sweating more, um, you know, maybe I'm breathing um, and it's more labored and my heart rate's increasing. And while that can indicate a deceptive answer to the questions that were asked, you also have to consider the environment and, um, you know, who's observing, right? Because if I'm feeling that way while I'm answering those questions, it could be because I'm in a tense situation, right? Because when you have a lie detector test conducted, it's usually because you're being inter interrogated about something, right? It could be about a crime. It could be um, about a screening process, right? Because uh, weirdly enough, um, a lot of government organizations still use polygraphs, i.e. NSA, uh, CIA, CIA <laughs> FBI. Um, and uh, some police departments. But here's the thing, at least with the government uh, departments, their whole thing, even though I still think it's an issue, is that they're more curious about, to me, looking at uh, lie detectors as being deterrence rather than detection, because here's the thing. There is no conclusive evidence that lie detectors work. You could have someone who has been trained to beat the system, so to speak, you could have someone who is completely innocent and is just nervous either by the situation or by the interrogator. Things happen. And while it is true that there have been some people over the years who have workarounds regarding that, that still doesn't make it any more true, right? Because sometimes we'll have a control and test question where, you know, they'll measure things out and they'll see if you're like lying about something that's like really minor and then kind of use that to go forward. Um, but yeah, so I guess my big thing is to say that there's a lot of math in the polygraph because it's like you're looking at data, you're measuring it, you're recording it, and you're interpreting it. But the problem is whenever you're interpreting data, you have to have context. And the thing is, to this very day, a lot of scientific organizations and government organizations say that they, uh, sorry, lie detectors, they're not proven completely valid, right? There's no actual evidence that they can confirm that someone is lying or not. All you got is data. And it's like, what kind of story are you telling? Is it an accurate one? Or, you know, are you dealing with an unreliable narrator? And when I'm thinking about lie detector tests, I think about uh, two big things. 
I think about Seinfeld because you know there's an episode about uh, Jerry Lyon and I, I'm always thinking about like what George said in that episode is like it's not a lie if you believe it <laughs> like who's to say that that's not the case for someone right if they're being tested like that so I think that's interesting the other big thing is like uh, meet uh, the parents because <laughs> like uh, there is some lie detector stuff in there um, but again like the whole thing is this is a situation where you are dealing with math you're dealing with statistics you're dealing with data and all that fun stuff but just because you're dealing with numbers just because your things are being measured doesn't mean they're accurate you have to have context you have to have it mean something when you're dealing with lie detector tests all it really means is like okay so things were measured beforehand questions were asked things maybe fluctuated or they didn't and results are interpreted as a um, product of that right but doesn't really mean you were telling the truth and again, as I mentioned earlier, right? You could have someone completely innocent fail a lie detector test. You could have someone who's completely guilty pass it. And we see this time and time again over history, yet we see this consistent pursuit for finding a perfect, reliable lie detector test, which again, does not exist currently. Um, and I think it's all interesting because context is key. And I know I've said that several times during this, but I maintain it. That being said, I'm leaving some links in the description on YouTube if you get more curious about all this stuff. But I hope you get the big take home message, which is like math is everywhere and in everything. And you can observe data, you can record data, and that's great. But you're only dealing with part of the story. How do you interpret it? And how do you interpret it accurately? And can you interpret it accurately? There's so many factors to explore. We like to simplify things, but oftentimes in reality, it's not that simple. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you look at some of the links um, and see if you find something interesting in there. And I hope you have a great day.